immoral, and wrong. This is the Modern Eater Show. Piping hot and delicious. The Modern Eater. Food, 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 food. Come and get it. And now you're you're hot. Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. You better believe it. <laughs> Here we are, the Modern Eater Show, live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. This is the every Saturday night. <laughs> it's the congregation, Brian. Seems weird saying Saturday Night Live, though. Oh, is it so bright outside? So I, I didn't mean the live part, but just Saturday night. Oh, we are. It's, it's Saturday it, night, it, and we're live. <laughs> it's a, kind of the food version of it. And I always say we're kind of like an oatmeal cookie. You bite into it, and you figure out it's a chocolate chip cookie. Wait. And then you go. No, it's an edible. <laughs> I've got to be careful around here. <laughs> really I don't need, it's like, what we, yeah, what yeah. was that? All right, but it feels good. <laughs> and that's what we, I feel good. Yeah. Live on Facebook, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to go down the feed here and, sh- and share it to, our, to my own personal timeline there. So check out f- the full value of the show on our Facebook feed. And what a great, it, it's a sausage party tonight, Brian. Oh, now with Rome sausage. <laughs> yeah. So good. And uh, Chris Johnson is here with us tonight from Rome sausage. He's going to check in. And uh, we've got a lot of uh, kind of uh, beer spirits related things in the second hour. Second hour, we kind of let our hair down a little bit. More food related in the first hour. And uh, we've got a great lineup here. We're going to start out with a couple of our favorites from Aspen Baking Company and Cody Ann Lockatour and Halsey. Hollis Casey, welcome, ladies, back to the Modern Eater Show. Thanks Thank for, having for having us. Welcome, welcome. You've never been here at the same time. No. no. This is fun. Right? I mean, here you guys are. I like yeah. this. Have you ever been to a bunny ranch? No. No. <laughs> no this no, is no, true. A, a, a real, like, farm. Where, we're going to a rabbit going? farm tomorrow. <laughs> where? <laughs> like a bunny farm. What for? Like, come on, where are you guys thinking? Uh, They're going for fishing. We're going to go fish. Okay. We're yep. going to get rabbits. Last week we had well, rabbits like on the show. Where are you going? Salida. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Salida, so pretty. Salida, Colorado. Have be you ever drive. been? Yeah. yeah. Two and a half hours. But um, the lineup of chefs that are going to join us at this river house. Justin Brunson's going from Old Major. Oh, cool. Cheeto's going from Las Delicias. Zach Kreider's going from Colorado, Colorado nice. Mills. Uh, who else? Chef Preston Phillips from Grind Kitchen and Watering Hole in Cherry Creek. You guys all fish. We're, we're all gonna, <laughs> you know, we all fish. That sounds awesome. And uh, the bunnies are delicious. Have you ever eaten rabbit? I have. Do you like rabbit? Yes. Uh, I'm had, from Texas. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Talk to her. I had <laughs> I had a pet rabbit. Uh, they're cute. They <laughs> really are. Years. Look at, yeah, look at the way forever. she's looking at you, Greg. I, she's burning holes. Oh, yeah. She's not. <laughs> I'll no. tell you what. And I said that. I, th- I think that Americans are used to eating ugly animals. That cute animals are just, uh, and bunnies are. I'm just picturing oh. Fatal Attraction right now. <laughs> really? You're boiling bunnies. Yeah. So, so tell me what, what's. Playing close. Yeah. <laughs> what's with the bunnies? What's with the bunnies? The bunnies are actually uh, probably one of the best uh, available meat to bone ratio, protein, oh. animals that you can possibly get out there. The taste to me is, is it's got a little, it's on a little on the gamey side, but kind of the consistency of chicken. Okay. And um, a lot of, we the last week we had some great chefs putting together some bunny dishes. Maybe I should say rabbit. Did you, you try, say did you try <laughs> that <laughs> black, <laughs> the black, the black like dishes? Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Bambi when you say bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I know every uh, Hollis just goes. She, her eyes play <gasps> a bunny, but no rabbit. All right, rabbit. I don't know. They're also considered almost a rodent, I think, <laughs> in a way. Oh, now you're in. Now they're <laughs> a rodent, Hollis. All right, where we see. Yeah, we went from that. She's soft, easily furry convinced. Pet, so. yeah, a rodent. I, mean, I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but uh, bread is safe. Bread right? is safe. Yeah, and all kinds of stuff. I was actually roaming your website here. Well, today. and tell us your roles. What What are your roles at Aspen Baking? So I was brought on last year to build out the box lunches, That's grab Cody and go, Ann. yes, and we just recently partnered with Rome Sausage, Chris Johnson, yeah. and we are doing breakfast sandwiches. So we've got a regular sausage patty and a hatch green chili Shut. sausage patty. It is delicious. So we've got is, yeah. plain bagel, everything bagel. Just get that beautiful right there. Yes. Um, Vanna White. <laughs> and here's what's up. You know, I mean, at first blush, you go, okay, really cool looking egg McMuffin. But when you look at the products that we are looking at here today. First of all, Aspen Baking Company. Well, I mean, I can go down the resume, but you look at uh, Aspen Baking Company, Natural Bakery, uh, one of the few truly in this state, no preservatives, artificial colorings, chemicals, 
uh, can be found, and all of all of them are GMO with the GMO-free palm oil, real butter versus margarine. This is the good stuff. And you look at Rome's; there, there's no additives, no preservatives. This is just good, wholesome food. Yeah, and so we're obviously real eggs. They've got cracked black pepper on them. We're we're excited, and we're excited with the partnership with Rome's because we want to make sure that the quality stays consistent and delicious. And you can see it right now, right on our Facebook page. <laughs> it's blown up into life-size picture there. It is tasty. All I, I've tasted your bread. You've been a big fan of the show, and thanks for coming down all the time. Yeah, thanks for having us. Your, your bread tastes awesome. You, we've got, I think, some... Oh, wait, you're pointing. Hollis's bread. Okay, it's Hollis's bread. Yeah. Okay, now oh, tell us no. your, your role. So, well, yeah, I'll kind of go off of that. Um, so we brought her on. This is totally new for us, this whole fresh concept, sandwiches, wraps, and salads. So we... We built out a whole kitchen just for this. And it's great for like our chefs because they're already getting breads and pastries from us. Now they get a, a bank, a conference comes in, they can order 500 box lunches from us. So it's kind of a, a win-win for both sides. We're Perfect. building, continuing building those relationships with them by you know presenting them with new, and, and we'll customize anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we're and we're working with with local people and keeping it natural. So. I was at, at the Hyatt just a couple of days ago, and the grab and goes that you yeah. guys have, um, and they, they're and they're putting another new space together. Greg Leonard showed me this inside the walls. You know, they just did the former Saint, and now they're redoing another bar. This concept's really cool, but uh, Aspen Baking. That's why we brought her on just for this. So really? It's, yeah. That's great. It's blowing it's been really up. Really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing a t especially getting into the conference season. Box lunches are so labor intensive and time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> we. We know that firsthand. Yeah. Um, so it's great to be able to take the burden off of the chefs and uh, their team. Yeah, it was interesting, Brian. I actually got in an Uber yesterday with a guy that was from, uh, he said, I'm in an, a, a van. So he was in a van. And he proceeded to tell me this story is that this is the same van I used when I worked for Sara Lee. And I'm like, and so he tells me this whole Sara Lee story, how mm. big they are, what they bought, everything else. And I'm like, that's all crap. <laughs> I know. It's just yeah. bad food. It's terrible. Yeah. When you get to be, and, 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 you know, obviously the model of being any business, you want to grow, you want to grow. But, guys, how do you maintain that integrity of your business? I mean, well, where do you go with that? Well, and going off of that, too, you know, you're saying it's, it's kind of crap. It's um, you know, and that's where we're, we're, when we're building these conversations with our customers it's you know they're asking about shelf life you know what's well what about the mold growth and you know and I say hey you want mold you want you want your bread to grow mold because that means that it's it's not packed full of chemicals and you know and all these things and so I I think yeah remember if that's a long shelf life there's a ton of preservatives. And there's something, it, right. It, there is something, and so there's something to be said. My, my mom asked, asked me the other day she said that uh, Gosh, you go to the grocery store a lot, like daily. <laughs> you know? I was like, I like to shop for yeah. fresh. Isn't that yeah. though a weird American thing? Ooh. Like we think we should only yeah. go to the grocery Meanwhile, store. Meanwhile, I said, once Mom, what week, are you having yeah, for dinner? Tea. She said, a Tostinos. Well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> and, and then uh, you know, and God bless my 72-year-old mother. <laughs> it, and she says of this, she says, I've lived this long that I am. I'm not real worried about it. And I go, all right, well, I can get with that. You know, why not do heroin or something? <laughs> <like that?" laughs> but the, the point of the matter is, is we, that. We could lay off that. What? The heroin. I mean, you know. Wait, if I was 73, <laughs> so I, I might give something a whirl that uh. was there. But the, the point being is, is that I like fresh, delicious food with ingredients and stories behind it. Yeah. And you guys' story is so phenomenal. Thank Where you. do you begin with that? Just talk about it. I mean, I want to say year 1994. Yeah. 94, yeah. And we, um, we started with the sourdough is what we originally got the bakery running on and listen to this our tray. yeah our um our sourdough it's a 97 year old starter from san francisco nice. so it's the it's the real deal and i mean occasionally we'll hear people which is crazy but they'll say I, it's a little it's too sour your sourdough is too sour oh it can never be i agree yeah. and i but yeah. i think that's just we're not used to real sourdough here um, so, yeah, we've got the sourdough, and then our next is the brioche buns, which we do for the majority of the restaurants in Denver. It's just butter, sugar, and eggs. It's the best hamburger bun 
across So, the- Hollis, I mean, tell me more, because I don't know yeah. as much about Aspen Bacon yeah. as I want to. Oh. And you're here tonight, yeah. and I want to dig. I want to yeah, dig. It's the good stuff. Because you talk about we. It sounds like you're a founder. Are you part of the family? Did you well, start it? You I were- guess I feel like uh, we're a family. So I say we because it's like I live, breathe, eat, and sleep it. It's it's my it's my home. It's we're we're all in it together and the yeah. Passion, bro. I, lo- I love to hear that. That I've means the culture like over there years, is great. So I've been there I mean, for a little while. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we do we do breads. We do the artisans, which are like the handcrafted breads, the baguettes, the ciabatta, focaccia, and then we do the pastries. So we do all the you know breakfast pastries. The hotels are ordering in. Um, all the we do desserts and then yeah. coffee and cakes, then pound cakes, coffee cakes, hot dog yeah. buns, yep. bear So claws, I have a restaurant lobster. and yeah. I, w- I want to bring you in to make something special just for me. Do you do that kind of thing? We do with volume because okay. we're we're on the more commercial side. We're so high volume that uh-huh. in order for us, our, our batches, our you know our mixers, our bowls are Huge. are massive. So you know if you're like yeah, I'm gonna order a thousand you know or loaves whatever, a week or a something week, like then, that. Yeah, yeah, we we do that. We can, we have. Um, Restaurant groups concepts that that will do a, a, a special bun for all their locations. Lark Burger, you know, we'll 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 even take their recipe. Am I on they fire? Nice. <laughs> I thought I was on fire for a minute there. See, my back is this warming. This is so up. cool back here. I, Isn't love, it? I, I mean, love look this. at this. Yeah, uh, this grill right here is actually going up with us to the uh, Rabbit Farm. We'll say that Rabbit. I like that. Rabbit Farm. The Bunny Farm. Good bunny Ranch. <laughs> The rabbit farm, that's coming up with us. But this grill is so cool from Proud Souls. Those guys will be on here. Here's the thing about bread. So this relationship with Rome's, and Chris is going to come up and we'll talk. But it's how do you accentuate what else is going on? There are certain things that you can do and stand alone with the delicious, you know, filled croissants. and the. But the bread, you know, you talk about the bread. Something that's going to support another great product just mm-hmm. like you're showing here today well, Cody Ann knows more about that yeah. yeah so we spent over six months just sampling we other everything's local which we love but just hand I mean hand picking it because we wanted it to be done right mm-hmm. and Aspen has built such an amazing um, culture and also the all of their products we needed to make sure that the quality was the same we're standing behind our brand. She points at you. You must have a lot of respect for all this. Lo- she's amazing. And, and point yeah. as kind of like, um, you know, this leader. Yeah. And, and, and oh, that's yeah. really cool. Um, and I think to the point of just you, you guys embrace each other. And you want to lift her up to be to that same stature. And what we're going to do right now, if you guys would stick around, because I want to have you on in the next segment with Chris. And we'll talk about Rome sausage, and we'll talk about how they complement each other. And uh, all is well in the world right here, Brian. Yes, it is. Uh, The (laughs) Modern Eater Show continues from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. I love this stuff. Friends and family in the house. And and when you talk about networking, what's the essence of the Modern Eater? It's about connecting the dots with other folks that are doing business. And when I would say family, community, if you look around the room tonight, I mean, it's really interesting because what we have here is owners from all these companies that are here to show that how they support hug? the modern eater. Yo, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love you, you. Brian. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. It's 619 in the Mile High City. We'll take that turnaround. Be right back from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. It is the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Hey, Greg. Check us out on... So there is, in the hour two, it says Modern Eater Open Hour Two, and it's you and I think Jay or... TheModernEater.com. Home prices have gone up by 50% in the... So this... I do have another open that says Modern Eater Hour Two Open, and then Modern Eater Eater Open Hour Two. So the Modern Eater Open Hour Two... Work, like... Yeah. Let me see if you can hear it. Okay, hang on. Mark Whistler from the Goods on Colfax, the hardest working man in the restaurant business. Knock, knock. Who's there? Whiskey. Whiskey who? Whiskey me, man. We've got a great distillery and a couple of breweries. We'll tell their stories right here on K-How and streaming live on Facebook. I got it. Takes a five-minute phone call to see how we can save you. Th- okay. 888-45. Did you guys hear that or no? <laughs> Nine. It's the biggest no brain. Okay, here, I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. Call us at 888-455-36. Hey, it's Greg and Jay. Hour number two is coming up next, Jay. Mark Whistler from the Goods on Colfax, the hardest. 55, 30, strong business. NMLS number 3304. Not all. 
Okay, I also have a uh, Modern Eater Hour 2 open that's different than that. It's the 50 second long, and it sounds like it's more of an open. It's about infused with American spirit, rocker whiskey. I'm out of my tweet. It's time for the second that's course. It. Look, feel, and experience. Okay, perfect. You want me to play both of them? You get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks? They've got... Okay. Food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rocker Spirits. Okay, a minute and a half. Spirits.com. Hi, I'm Andrew Moore, brewmaster at the Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. At Intrepid Sojourner, beer tells a story inspired by my adventures as a well-traveled archaeologist. My recipes draw inspiration from all over the world, from historical styles like satis, grazers, and kvass, to adjunct beers inspired by flavors from international cuisines. My beers broaden the horizons of what beer can be. Explore basil IPA and Turkish coffee stout. Enjoy chai brown ale. Taste lavender tripel and the distinctive horchata milk stout. Thoughtfully source spices and herbs, enhance flavors inherent to indigenous beer styles. My sincere hope is that Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project will inspire adventure and wanderlust. Come visit the tap room and share your tales with friends and plan your next sojourn. Located at 925 West 8th Avenue in the heart of the Arts District on Santa Fe. For everything Intrepid, Look us up online at SojournerBeers.com and remember to drink globally, locally. Little Rich here. It's the new year and we're all looking for ways to save money. Here's a tip I bet you didn't know about. Do what I do. Buy your natural gas wholesale. Instantly saving 10 to 12% off your gas bill every single month. Baby, that's some serious cash. Do what I've done for years and call Brian Rizzuto at Encore Energy today. The sooner you call, the sooner you save. Coming back in 10 seconds. Energy 720-245-5771. That's 720-245-5771. Save money on natural gas with Encore Energy. Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> this is Justin Brunson, Ultra Meat and Cheese in Denver Central Market. I'm a meat guy. <laughs> and you're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Okay, you're hot. That was JB, Justin Brunson, right there. It was funny. I texted him. I said, what are you doing tonight, Justin? He said, uh, I'm doing dishes at Old Major. I said, well, that's a great use of your time. And he said, uh, F my life. Yeah. He, sometimes that's the owner's yeah. life. You know that, You know that. That is sometimes. But we'll see Justin tomorrow for a uh, sweet cookout down at the uh, rabbit farm. No? Yes. No, yes. Yes, yes. Rabbit Farm. <laughs> yes, Rabbit yes, Farm. Yes, Brunson. Yes, to all things meaty deliciousness. Uh, uh, all the things meaty, meaty <laughs> deliciousness. Well, I'll tell you, though, we did s- rabbit several different ways the other night, and the one that no one got to taste because it wasn't ready until the end was this black magic with Proud Souls and the Spice Guy did a black magic rub. And I will tell you, if you had this rabbit, you would say, oh, my gosh, every day, give me more. It was awesome. Life-changing. I, it was life changing. It truly was. You yeah, look, you I look took different. For sure. I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm like it cleared my complexion <laughs> up something. right away. Yeah. My hair now is its natural full. color, not gray anymore. And it's full. Um, you know, all the way around. I'm yeah. feeling like a million bucks. I'm, in. I'm here trying to maneuver around on my Facebook to share. I still haven't shared this video to my own personal time. <laughs> I think I had a mini stroke. I really do. <laughs> I, I, it, because my brain is not clicking on all cylinders right now. Just to do a reset. Aspen Banking Company continues here with us with uh, Cody and Lockatour and Hollis Casey. But right now, the reason for the season, and that's right, our sausage, sausage party tonight sponsored by Chris Woo-hoo. Johnson and Rome Sausage. Yeah, man. buddy. Gosh, this is cool. Um, this past week, Chris, we've spent a little time together. We've gotten to know each other. Absolutely. Uh, you're a great guy, man. I Tru- appreciate that. Truly a solid, solid guy, a foundation of our industry. And uh, if you're not familiar with Rome Sausage, you need to be immediately because this is our guy. When it comes to sausage, you're our man. And uh, thank you for being you and thank you for Rome's. Could you take 30 seconds to say this is what Rome Sausage is? Sure, but let me, let me first say thanks for having me and, and oh. appreciate the support of everybody in the room, Aspen Baking especially, and Cheetos always hooking it up with the you, chorizo You've got poppers. some of the best sausage yeah. in town, Chris. Yeah, I mean, wait, but, should yeah. we just say the best sausage in town? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. Absolutely. Best. There you go. Uh, you know, the short story for us is we're, we're family-owned, family-operated. Everything is made in small batches, a couple hundred pounds at a time. We're hand-mixing the spices, just really straightforward, amazing stuff. Like, no, no junk, no filler, just... Just great, great why, stuff. Why isn't that normal? <laughs> I've asked that question all the time. 
why is just good wholesome food not normal anymore? It's, it's refreshing, right, to see that and kind of like a throwback. Well, uh, Chris, talk about that real? small batch because yeah. you're, I, I was talking with you the other day about the fact that you're using the same animal for each batch. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the big guys, the national guys, are doing, you know, 10, 20,000 pound runs at a time. They're buying liquid spices, so to speak. It's, it's just a, it's a numbers game, and, and we're, we're touching the pork. You know, it's tangible. We're hand-mixing the spices. Like I said, it's a very hands-on, soulful stuff. And, you know, having seen Aspen's, you know, bakery and getting to know those folks, you know, they're, they're aligned with the same values that we are. Like, look, let's just take care of folks. Let's make, let's make great, straightforward stuff. Uh, you know, charge a fair price, and then beyond that, support the entire, you know, food community in, in Colorado beyond that. So we're thrilled to be aligned with, with Aspen, doing business with, with the fine folks over there. So um, it's, it's, to your point, you know, refreshing in that the large food complex is all about saving money, you know, making it as efficient as possible. Cutting yeah, cutting corners to deliver that number to the shareholders, and that's not how we're almost over Aspen From operates. From the sourcing to the food to the people. Right. All yep. the way down the line. Yep. That's well, everything. using all local animals, right? I mean, that's a big thing for you guys. It, I, saw. I mean, when you can, it, it's a difficult proposition because uh, as we do sourcing, Chris, y you know that when you're working with different farms and ranches that there are great people outside of the state of Colorado. And I think uh, if they're doing great pract practices, bring them on in. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no ideal scenario for 100% compliance as far as sourcing locally goes. You know, about 20% of the hogs or the pork that we buy come from hogs born and raised in Colorado. You know, we'd love for that to be, uh, you know, 100%, and we're actively sourcing to make that happen. Um, but, like, you know, be it flour or salt or pepper or whatever, like it's, you That's know, a no-brainer yeah, right Yeah, there. You, you try and do as much as you can with what's reasonably possible. We have a mission, Brian, on, in our road trip. So road trip uh, 2019, when we hit the road for over a week and we tour Colorado, we need to find some pig farmers that'll figure out how this relationship uh, can work out because there are certain things. You can't take a whole pig. Right. I mean, you, the conundrum of a cattle rancher is how do we sell? At the end I, of the, the day, grind. they're yeah. they're left over with a bunch of hamburger. Yep. Because everybody wants to tender yep. and so exactly. on and so forth. And there are certain cuts that you need to be able to continue right. with your business model. Right. If, if we could source a pig that's got... You know, 100% pork butts only. Yeah, just four butts. That, yeah, that, that'd be the whole thing. Just just a lot of butts all day. All butts, all sausage, all day long. But, no, um, yeah, it's tough for us to source d with directly from a rancher because they want to sell me the whole animal. I think we can do it. But we, uh, I think we can, too. Yeah, but, you know, we don't use bellies. We don't use ribs and that kind of thing. So it's not a perfect scenario, but we're working towards as, as, as best a scenario we can. Are we running an uphill battle with these unique one-off relationships like Rome's and Aspen and do, do people care? I care. Do, I care. Do it's a big care? deal to me. As far as like who we are and what we're doing and how that, saw that that this is so unique and this is great ingredients and these are great brands together. I'm going to tell you that more and more these days when people reach out to me via email or messenger, they say to me, I really appreciate that the modern eater shows me the people, the process, and the and and the the food that's coming from these brands because I want to know the stories. I think more and more these days, people want to know where their food comes from. Yeah, well, Greg, yeah, transparency. And what you just right. said was these are Colorado companies. I mean, Rome just, Rome's wasn't started yesterday. Aspen Bacon wasn't starting yesterday. So, I mean, I think that that's what I, I feel is super unique is, is how do you plow it back in to our local companies? How do we plow it back in so the dollars that we spent, you know, have you ever heard about money wandering? <laughs> Let's not let it wander wow, out of the I state. Like Do you like lot. that? <laughs> well, I, and I always say that if, if there's a, a, a product that is in the market that's local, a local business, you have an obligation. You have an obligation of being in that community to do business with that person if you have um, the desire to use something that's a product that they purvey. And um, more and more these days, I think people are searching out how they have that thirst do you guys find that where you have that loyalty through Rome's or Aspen to where people say, I can't do anything else. I can't cheat on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you do? <laughs> okay. We have, yeah, we have that a lot. Well, we offer, like Cody Ann was saying, it's, we're consistent. Um, 
you know, if there's ever a problem, we take care of it. So I think mm -hmm. there's that reassurance on our end is, you know, for the customer that, you know, hey, if we, we messed up or, or you know, we, we got it taken care of and yeah. if delivery, you got, you know, hoagie rolls instead of it, it happens. And sure. so I think they know that um, we're not just going to tell them to deal with it and good luck. And yeah. so well, we, and we like to take care of them. I got to believe you are constantly looking for better ingredients in a better way to help people. I mean, because your solution is, is how do you have great consistent bread all the time? For, for your guests? We kind of honestly don't really change a lot. And we're, we're kind of, we've, we've okay. found uh, we found our niche and, and you know, our, our ingredients and, and what we're getting in. Um, so we're sticking with that. And uh, like I said, we're, we do those custom items for, for the volume for businesses that are coming to us. But but otherwise, um, we're not changing anything because it because it works. What we're doing is, is working. Yeah, that's what so. I want to – don't go changing on me. No. <laughs> don't go changing yeah. yeah, on uh, none of you guys. Yes. To your point, it's a refreshing scenario the way they're set up, and it's similar for us. Is like we're not going to be all things to all people. Right. We're going we're gonna to play in our category. Yeah. We're going to yeah. play with, you know, the, our, our specialty yeah. and do that well. And, like, we're not going to, you know – expand in all these crazy different areas like we're just gonna we're specialized Chris know? I learned something here recently and you can tell me whether it's true or not but there's a, a I look at labeling a lot now and I look at labeling with um, it's terrible to start out with whiskey distilled by um, it, fermented by bottled by it shows you where if it's in that right. distillery itself I learned that there's a label process, especially with meat packaging, right. that you can tell where that meat packaging is born by a number on there. And you can look, you can actually look it up online to see who's walking the walk, who's talking the talk. Is, is there any truth to that? Because yeah. I do my research that way. You're very, you're very well read, and I appreciate that. So on the, on the boxes, on a USDA-inspected product, there's a, there's a bug number. It's a little circle that says inspected by the USDA. And there's a code underneath that um, that little the, the number, so to speak, and that code is, you know, six four zero seven seven three eight eight whatever it is. You can go online, Google that plant code. It'll tell you where their product was made, be it bacon, sausage, hamburger, wherever. It's a traceability thing. Yeah. So, so consumer, if so, if you hear someone touting local, right, you you can do your due diligence to find out where that product's coming from. Right. And it's just being an informed consumer. That's all I see. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, we have the same thing. We have a code mm -hmm. so we can trace those batches. So if there ever, anything ever came back, we can trace that batch and Boom. throw it out if we need to there or, it or alter it or whatever. Yeah, so. I, find, I really find that how many people, act, they say they're local, but who's actually doing local? Who's trying their best? Yeah. You right. know, because I'm going to go out of my way to spend my, the, my money with those folks. Another cool thing about Rome Sausage is, um, obviously, you work with distributors, right? right? I mean, that's the name of the game. But with distributors, what I've found in my research is that there's a certain amount of SKUs that they can use with a lot of them with commitments. But folks can go direct with Rome's. Is that right? That, that is correct. We do about half our business in a direct delivery uh, scenario. I believe you guys deliver direct too, don't you? Do you yes. not? Yeah. So, it, you know, we, we appreciate the relationship with our distributors and we're very grateful for, for uh, the partnership there. But as a secondary, like, hey, you can't get it from XYZ distributor, we'll, we'll come see you. Happily. Call me. I'll bring sausage. Chris, you know what's interesting you about what you're saying about that is the transparency with the distributor. One of the things we just learned at Growers is, is we just started introducing some meat products. And the, what happened is, is some of these small people like Corner Post Meats, yeah. Shogun Wagyu, these people that, you know, they're not grinding anything like you. Sure. But what they're doing, they're doing just a whole, you know, either primal cuts or specific, very specific cuts. Right. And I found out that the distributors, the larger distributors will often, if they want to make a better margin, they'll steer people away from the branded sausage or something or branded meat that they might the buy. The name of the game is commitment. Yeah, and, and that's why it's really interesting. I didn't know how cutthroat the meat side of it was where you they can really direct someone right away from you. And so I appreciate that you're going direct. Because I think that there's something to be said. You want to know how it works? Contact Chris. He gets his brother-in-law to mobilize. His brother-in-law gets, that's the type of stuff I love. I love it. Yeah. You know? You're getting that personalized commitment to you, the product, 
and uh, it's going to be the best quality that you have. So, uh, Mr. Pizzeria, Mr. Italian right. Restaurant, Mr. Uh, the list goes on. Right. And, like, and let me say this, not to interrupt, but, you know, when you buy from us, you obviously support me and, and you know, my wife and yeah. my kids, you know, and my brother-in-law who works for me, and then also the folks in the plants and their families and on down the line, you know, the the spice company we buy yeah. from, the boxes, the labels. I'm not putting another yeah. boat in Hormel's uh, yacht yard. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'd, yeah. ra- I'd rather support you and your family. Truly. I appreciate that. And that's, that's every, everyone in this room has that same mentality. And that's yeah. why, you know, every time I leave here, I'm filled with gratitude towards you guys and what you're putting forth here is a labor of love and a labor of, you know, just increasing exposure for all the folks who are, you know, just trying to make a living and, and do something that's soulful and, and, and proud, they're proud of and, you know, contributing to the local food scene in, in, a, in a meaningful way. It doesn't hurt that the product's delicious. Right. Uh, we, yeah. I mean, that's the end of the. And so as we come here and we're going to distribute some of these great things with Aspen Baking Company, Rome Sausage. And tonight is such a fun night because we get to highlight and focus on that community. Chris Johnson, thank, thank you. you very much. I right, appreciate it, man. Oh, man. <laughs> What you do for us in the show and, and being somebody that jumps on. And, and when I met you, I knew immediately this is a guy that not only are we going to do business together, but we're going to hang out. Absolutely. Uh, I appreciate as that. As scary as that is. <laughs> right. He's amazing. Go, go eat some rabbits, yeah. right? That's right. <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. Holly's, we have a new uh, fan uh, here. Either she's a fan tonight. or mad. <laughs> or you, either she's real <laughs> mad or real happy. And that's one of the problems I've been trying no. to figure out with my life. <laughs> I'm a big meat eater. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, guys. Thanks. We're Thank going to you do guys. spices coming up next. We're going to highlight this grill. We're going to go into the second hour. We're Please going to talk stick about around. some great yeah. spirits and beers. Um, the Whiskey Sisters are here. Cool. I know. Did you give Cheeto any love yet? He's over there making chorizo jalapeno poppers from scratch, man. He's killing it. I know, and I was going to ask Greg, what is his favorite Rome sausage? Because we're going to try three different flavors tonight. We've got some of the, your chorizo in the poppers, like you just yep. said. The jalapeno I, cheddar brats. Yep, the jalapeno cheddar brats on the Aspen baking. Yep. The jalapeno. Cheddar you, hoagie. Oh, yeah, jalapeno hoagie roll. cheddar. That sounds just like a match made in it's heaven. so good. And we brought Asiago, too, which is another good one but nice. i like the jalapeno cheddar nice yeah so the, it we are to greg's point a little bit of a sausage fest even though there is <laughs> some uh awesome chickens that looks amazing. spinning around on this proud soul you, you guys are talking perfect. the whole time i'm just like barbecue staring at the chicken like man. i know it's <laughs> great time <laughs> i gotta get after that it's great and it's perfect for me and i look like a park bench so we'll all have dinner oh on hey, it's okay i have a picnic every week <laughs> i do a chicken at my house it's one of these things i'm going to start this summer is yes. make break. the chicken every sunday eat it all week sunday dinner it's baby. good Chris, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Cody it very much. You. Thanks, thank guys. You. Always thank you. All right, coming back with Spicy Dan. Spicy Dan Hayward from uh, Savory Spice Shop. That's coming up next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Here, live in 245. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. It's time. Time to join the millions of people that meet happy with Zoom video conferencing. Zoom gives you flawless video, crystal clear audio, and instant sharing across any mobile, tablet, or desktop device. But the best thing about Zoom? It just works. So ditch the distractions, join the movement, and meet happy with Zoom video conferencing. Visit zoom.us to set up your free account today. That's Zoom.us, Zoom video conferencing. Lowe's knows you're the gardener who does it right to make your flower and vegetable plants thrive. We do it right, too, with deals like five bags of miracle Grow all-purpose garden soil for just $10 during our spring Black Friday sale. Grow delicious vegetables and herbs and save on Bonnie plants, now four for $10. Find spring Black Friday savings like these throughout the store, but hurry because they won't last long. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through 417, not valid in Alaska or Hawaii. Bonnie offer valid on 19-ounce pots. See store for details, U.S. only. Colleen Ferreira here with the Colorado Chefs Association. You've probably heard the excitement. This year, we are creating a stir in the culinary community. This is your personal invitation to join us on our constant culinary adventure. Let us open up our network to you and help you grow professionally. Whether you are a chef, purveyor, brewer, baker, we are here to build your brand, your business, and connect you with Colorado's culinary community. Join us. I'd love to hear from you. Email me, Colleen, at acfcoloradochefs.org. 
Hey, Chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Want to bake the best, bake with the best. Little Rich here from Rock Alitas Tortillas and... 30 to the live. Wraps fold cold and don't break open. Yet they're soft and delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and heirloom grains like quinoa, spelt, and more. Locally headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flours, whole grains, customized blends and specialty products live in 10 culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients i love live in five four three two you're hot dot com Cool, right now, back to Studio Kitchen Colorado momentarily, but Jeff Rourke and A Plus Beverage Solutions, family owned and operated. What does Jeff Rourke do? He installs the tap lines of your dreams. He also does maintenance as well. Foam is money. Pouring that inefficient beer is terrible, you Mr. Bar owner, you Mr. Brewery owner. What do you do when you pour inefficient beer, boys? You You're pour pouring your money, money down, down the, the drain. drain. Don't pour your money down the drain. Just get a hold of Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. He'll give you an A-Plus report card if you just give him a call. 720-272-3809. Tell me again, Greg. Write it down, Brian. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke. A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Yes, sir. Hey, this is Brother Luck, Colorado Springs. All right, you ready? <laughs> Owner of Four by Brother Luck and Lucky Dumpling. I mean, he's, he's a very, very impressive man. And you're rocking with the Modern right. Show on iHeartRadio. Yes, you are back at it, the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio in full value on our Facebook live stream. You can, Dan, do I look like a uh, picnic table? tonight. You do, man. <laughs> Park I, I, I don't have any checks, but I want my red for you, man, just so we can, you know. <laughs> I said everybody can play. eat dinner off my back. There, oh, see? Man. Why not? Spicy Dan, I love you, dude. Thanks, man. You well, I'm so good, glad to be back. A lot of good stuff. Thank you. Uh, where do you begin? Uh, Savory Spice Shop. Give us a little. Well, Savory Spice, we've been around since 2004. I run the Boulder location. Mike and Janet Johnson, the founders of the company, my, my business partners, my good friends. Um, we sell the freshest, most quality, high, highest quality spices. Um, retail, we work with wholesale. We work with a lot of these people in this room, uh, like a lot of distilleries, a lot of breweries and things like that. We love to talk about food. We love recipes, all the smells and everything that's going on here. We, lo we love to I, connect. I love that, Dan. So talk about spaces. Food. Yep. You can do it. Yeah. That's the obvious. Obvious. What are the not so obvious spaces? Well, I think, you know, and again, the distilling world, you know, just speaking with these guys over here and drinking this amazing cocktail and uh, talking about botanicals for gin, how to dial that in, what's interesting, what's new. Uh, they were giving me a little more insight into their distilling operation and picking up flavors and uh, temperature and things like that. That's interesting to me. The brewing world, having worked with, you know, people like Upslope and Avery. Um, all down to the, you know, the smallest little tap room that you can find and helping them dial. You know, they come into the shop, they say, this is what we want to make. And then we'll go around and smell and taste and, and really discover what's interesting and fun and just find that, that profile they're looking for. What's the number one beer spice? Coriander? Coriander, yeah, I'd say so. That's, and why? That's number why? one. Why? You know, I had somebody come in today doing a home project, making a, making a goza. Yeah. You know, coriander is kind of woody, a little citrusy. You know, it's one of those spices that kind of crosses a lot of, you know, range of flavor. Okay. And, um, you know, that's what a lot of guys are using. He bought that and some great salt to make his own goza. He was going to barrel age it. Distillers, and, what uh, can they do with you? Um, a lot on the botanical side for gin. Mm -hmm. um, and then you need to get into the specialty, um, you know, aperitivos, uh, amaro, um, anything they want to make uh, interesting bitters. I work with a lot of bitters makers as well. Um, so pulling in all those interesting flavors, whatever those guys are into. I got a deep question for you, Spicy Please. Dan. <laughs> yeah, I love Wh it. What do you think is the most underutilized spice? What are people just not tying into that they really should know about? What they should be putting in more dishes? What they should be building yeah. a meal around? We have, um, we have black garlic. 
You guys ever tried black garlic? I've before? got it right now in my warehouse. See? But I've got the, you know, fresh black garlic, not dried, but are you doing it fresh and then drying it yourself? Well, or? we don't do it ourselves, but it okay. comes from California. It's organic garlic. Nice. Um, it's a three-week fermentation process. It, you know, it takes, takes roasted garlic to the whole different level. Oh, it's I figgy, love it. It's figgy. It's like balsamic. It's like demi glace. It's really rich, like umami flavor. That most people have never experienced. That's going, on, that's going on wing. What are you going to yeah. do with it? Oh, well, you want to hear my, well, I'll, I'll give you, let me get, throw it a different way. Let me give you my best black garlic story is, okay. is I had someone call me and say, my black garlic's got mold. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? No. Yeah, and I tried to. Uh, chef? Uh, you know, I won't name names. You know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not one of those guys. But, yeah. but I think it's funny because people don't realize there's a few things like mushrooms. Yeah. You know, it always kills me when someone says, oh, there's mold on my mushrooms. Yeah. I'm like, no. You've just held that mushroom too long at the wrong temperature, yeah. and that mushroom is re-sporing. Yeah, right. And so uh, because <laughs> the mushroom is just world. mold, exactly. and it's just going to grow, you know, so you might leave it for three weeks, and you might have five pounds of that one pound. Yeah. <laughs> the other one I was going to mention is, uh, is fennel pollen. And I don't oh, know if you've worked okay. with that one either. So yeah. a big, bold, anise-like flavor. You know, they hand harvest from the fennel plant. Thank you, sir. And... Um, and that the flavor that's used at more of a, like a, a finishing aspect or what have you to soup, stocks, uh, fish, especially um, some poultry is remarkable. Well, and you know what's interesting? I would say all the way around, I think fennel is underutilized. Yeah. Um, I love to put it in my mashed potatoes. There's certain things that we should be using fresh fennel. Yeah. And, and it's anise, folks, just so you know. Yeah. Fennel, anise, anise. licorice. All the way down the line, so one there, plant, many uses. It's kind of like cilantro, though. There's a lot of people that don't like it. Yes. You know, there's about 20% of the population is like, mm, yeah. nope. I, it closes can't, that can't way, take too, it. isn't it? Close very strong. It overpowers everything. Yeah, it really does. Well, the two things that I brought today that yeah, we do bring? ourselves. So I brought our whiskey barrel smoked black pepper, whiskey barrel smoked sugar. So um, about two years ago, we bought our own competition-grade smoker. It's huge. You know, it's about as big as your kitchen here. Um, because we were buying a pepper from a, a supplier that couldn't supply us anymore. So we we're like, you know what? Let's do it ourselves. Good so for you. We I got, like to hear that. We're working with some local guys here in Denver getting the old whiskey barrel staves and smoking this pepper and smoking this sugar. This is like a Demerara sugar. Um, this is our own cracked pepper that we do ourselves. We put it on those sheet trays and smoke it for a couple days. Yeah. The depth of flavor in here is unbelievable. Spicy dance. Um, this yeah. is the stuff. Spice shop. Uh, here's what's cool is that we're going to do some long-form stuff together. So we're going to get Spicy Dan with me and you, Brian. Yep. We're going to bring him in here and during the week, and we're going to build the ultimate spice rack, not yep. only for a restaurant, but we're going to build it for a consumer. So yeah. we're going to ask him questions. Oh, right? yeah. And he's going to yep. ask us questions. What yep. do you need? What? Yep. And it's going to be the most interesting thing that you've ever heard. You know why? Because a lot of what you do in food and beverage revolves around spices. That's right. Well, it, it should open your mind. I mean, I'll yeah. tell you, right when you brought this whiskey barrel sugar to the table, my mind started going in what different you, directions. Well, I started going as, as crazy as it is, as, and I know tonight we, we've got some great liquor here in the yeah. building. So I started going towards drinks, Okay. as, as, as odd that as that might be. But oh. then I, I, I think about, like, what about a waffle that has a different sugar spice in it? Yeah. What You know, can you finish off something like that? Are you finishing a bar glass? He's pointing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, I mean, this stuff is just so good, man. Can we have that? You can. You got to smell it, man. You got to taste it. To. So I, this, I my favorite to do a nice sugar steak with that whiskey barrel sugar. Oh. It'll blow your mind. Stop it. Blow okay. your mind. Right now. So I love. Listeners, yeah. Well, viewers. and I love where you go. And that's what. Shouldn't a spice do that? And that's right. thank you because not only can you, the best chefs get it, yep. but the consumer can get it because you have retail locations here in Denver yep, exactly. that that's super unique that someone, you know, who is doing something with some of the best chefs in the state. Yep. You can also get their product just as a consumer, as a yeah. lonely like guy like me who likes to cook on the weekends. Yep. Kind of like I can go get in, your spice. Talk to us. We'll help. We'll help dial it in for you. Great segue, Spicy Dan. Yes. How can people get at you? So come see us in our um, Denver Denver locations. We've got Denver downtown Denver, Littleton, Lowry, uh, Boulder location, and SavorySpiceShop.com. You'll find us. Come see us. We'd love to talk food. We will help dial you in. Killing I promise. It. Killing it. Killing it. Absolutely. Can we get you in here this week with us to do some videos? 
Uh, maybe. 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 <laughs> if not that, this week, wait, the next. We're not going to give see. up. What's <laughs> funny is that a lot of times I, when you uh, pin people down on the air, they just say yes. <laughs> That's how authentic the, Dan's like, yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll be I'm hit. getting married soon, and but we're having soon. a baby in July. Ah, your wife Hello. is lovely. Uh, Congratulations. Bree's not here tonight. She said she was going to miss you. Uh, well, listen, we like you know, Bree. And exactly. We, uh, when she came in, we took some pictures. I have some good pictures. I want to give I, you some Okay, pictures. man, come on. I like spam. Uh, we'll we'll get game. her in here soon with the baby bump. Uh, perfect. <laughs> and feed that baby some good <laughs> food, man. Good guy, man. Congratulations. Pleasure. Spicy Thank Dan you, guys. Hayward, right Thank you. Thank you, uh, Spicy. Always a pleasure. Yeah, nice okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, okay, guys. Okay, we'll take a break. Come back in the kitchen. Coming up next, and we're going to do uh, guys that we love. And um, here they come, right? Do you know here what they it come. is? Who's look coming the, up next? Our friends from Proud Souls Barbecue. How could We're our boy Tony? We're entering a competition. Did you know? We're doing a rib competition. We are. We'll okay. tell you I about like it, it next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. They're live in 238. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Just move it to the next break. Videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. Pop quiz. If you sell a home for $500,000, how much would a traditional real estate agent charge in commission? If you guessed twenty-five dollars to $30,000, you're right. Fifty-eight fifty. dollars Wrong. This is why thousands okay. are making the switch to Rex. With Rex, you get a dedicated agent. So the music's going to start playing at fifty-nine thirty. okay? Rex uses game-changing technology to cut out the middleman and... Okay. Tens of thousands of dollars in fees. See if you qualify by calling 833-REX-HOME. That's 833-REX-HOME. Remember, this is your home. Why give an insane amount of equity away to an agent? Rex offers the lowest fee in the industry without skimping on service. You'll work with a licensed local expert with you every step of the way. Get the most out of your home. See if you qualify by calling 833-REX-HOME. 833-REX-HOME. That's 833-REX-HOME. DRE license 01976010. Minimum fee applies. Hey, it's Peter Allman with South River Aquaponics. As a chef and aquaponics farmer, I get the importance of conserving our limited water supply. Did you know Colorado is suffering from the most severe drought since 2012? Water shortages are very real, especially to Colorado farmers. Now here's the good news. Aquaponic farming uses 90% less water than traditional farming, while producing four and a half times more food per square foot. Using traditional farming techniques, farmers would flood their fields okay, one minute. of water, leaving much of this water underutilized and just plain wasted. But because aquaponics is a recirculating system, the only water used is what the plants uptake and some very minor evaporation. South River Aquaponics has been running a 55,000 gallon system year round for four years, and we use less than 500 gallons of water per day. Education is very important to us here at South River Aquaponics. I invite you to learn more about aquaponics at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. Hey Colorado, this is Brian Freeman, owner of Growers Organic and a host on the Modern Eater Talk Show. Growers Organic is a Colorado sourcing company who provides Colorado's greatest chefs with the best organic produce. I've been partnering with local and regional farms for the last 20 years, and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. Chefs who receive the highest rating on Good Food 100 choose Growers Organic for their organic. Ten. It's because we're experts at bridging the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Feed me now! This is the Modern Eater Show. That's right, boy! I'm starving! And now it's time for In the... You're hot. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? Rock you by... Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Award-winning competition cooks and purveyors of specialty barbecue supplies right here in Denver, Colorado. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Feed me all night long. <laughs> you better believe it, right? <laughs> <laughs> all night long. In the Kitchen, uh, proud sponsors of In the Kitchen. is Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Uh, right now, this is cool because um, we... It, it, you don't have the opportunity often, but here they are, all in one space. And uh, so for Tony Roberts, how are you? Welcome back. Good, Greg. How's it going? And hey, Chris, Brian, how are you, sir? How are you doing, sir? Good. And Very Chris good. Webb. What's up? Uh, you guys brought something cool. Chris, get on that. Start just tearing <laughs> that open. Say what you have there, okay. and then we're going to have Tony go on a whole different yes. tangent. Yes. So this is awesome, right? So we got in the shop today. First of all, we sell meat at the shop. A lot of folks don't know that. 
Um, we do everything from Wagyu beef, from Snake River Farms. This is actually a Midland meat company, a fifth generation family farm out of Midland, Texas. Um, these guys are amazing, right? They fly this stuff in. As soon as I call it in, I get the same day. It's amazing. Quit teasing me, wow. I'm sorry. Let's cut to the chase, right? So we got some uh, Midland Meat Company um, beef ribs, right? These are and the Chris, dinos. You're tearing that open out of a bag. Is that how you, is that how you um, hey, smoked it tonight, or yeah. is that you just wrap that afterwards? Or what, tell me. Yeah. So what we did was we started them around 9 a.m. today. Um, went ahead and cooked them at hot, probably 275 or so. So this Wagyu beef, the hotter you can cook it, the better, right? Um, and then after that, we dropped it down a little bit. After we cooked for about five hours or so, I went ahead and wrapped it in this peach butcher paper. All that's going to do is the same thing as foil, except it's going to let it breathe, right? So that's okay. how we're going to get a little these bit of crust on these guys. These guys are our authority on oh, barbecue. Man. Look at that. That's man. great. Okay, we have a rib Boomerang. competition coming up, We Tony. do have a rib competition coming up. It's at the Gothic Theater. It's May 18th on a Saturday. It's open to the public. Um, we're inviting teams down. We're almost sold out. So if you want to get in and get a, your your ribs judged by certified judges and some a group of VPI, VIP judges that are we're out there having fun all day. So Gothic Theater, Saturday, May 18th. May 18th. Come, May 18th. On, come it, on down. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. The Modern Eater Show is going to be there. How many, how many people are Check competing? 12 groups or how many? 24. 24. 24 folks are competing. And we so. have, we're at 20 right now. Yep. Yeah, guess so, what okay. one of them is. I think it's the modern eater, and it's a. <laughs> it's a, a Why not? Yep. Why not? It's the three of us, and right? We're gonna throw this down. It, that's the that's, spirit of the competition. That is isn't the spirit. It? You're of a the backyard barbecue, and backyard. Not. We're inviting all backyard cooks to come down, yeah. and we're gonna showcase ribs for the day. We'll have an anything goes contest. The cool thing about it too is Jeff. Our buddy over here, Jeff Jabot, who's in a lot of times with Sugar Fire Smokehouse. Is he's, Jeff here? He's not here tonight. Oh, oh he pointed at the big green he'll, egg, he'll, and I'm like, okay. He'll be, he'll be okay. down there with Sugar Fire. Our buddy Jason Ganahl at GQ Barbecue yeah. will be there. Jared Leonard will be there doing an onstage demonstration. We've got Bill from Smoke and some other uh, personalities, sure. Eric from Burnt Out. Um, it's going to be a day of barbecue. It's Just come down, so have much. fun, craft brews. Enjoy barbecue, enjoy things like sure. we're doing today, and just have fun about it and a concert at the Gothic at the end of the night. With one yeah. minute left, I want you to do this. It's grilling season. You're going to hear from these guys every week, but it's important. We love what you do here. Thank you for the <laughs> cool. green egg. Yep. Thank you for this grill right here. We love to spin that. But uh, what's happening at Proud Souls? What's happening? No, well, what's not? Yeah. Selling grills, man. I'll tell you Dude. what, today was a crazy day. I, we love to see it because there's so many people here in Denver that came in today. We had a huge demonstration. We cooked all day long. We passed out free food. I think we, 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 we say one backyard at a time, right? Well, there were 15 backyards that we sent new grills to today at least. And your location, Tony? 25th and Federal, right up the street. I so love come, street. In, come, in, come in and see us. Saturdays are great days. You'll get to eat. You'll see ribs like this, what Chris cooked. I mean, these things are, are phenomenal. We do all sorts of different foods. Check but, out their website. Um, Look at their so glasses. Uh, these guys are the real deal, and they are pit masters, and they want to make you one, too. They're going to give you all the specific needs. Uh, Tony and Chris, thank you. We're going to go in the next hour. These are our guys, man. One of the easiest Barbecue sponsors. Barbecue purveyors. Be back yeah. next with the Modern Eater Show. Great. Thank you. I actually asked to buy another minute. I told our, our producer there back at iHeartRadio. Cool. Well, and Greg, let me jump in and talk about Proud Souls for a second because yeah. they are one of the easiest sponsors for me to get so behind because what they do, there's just no question. It's pure, to their, man. They're bringing some of the best equipment into Colorado. They're bringing some of the best meat but what don't we right want there at their happen, store. Guys? And it's so easy. You go in and, and you're walking through and you're with your honey and you go into, you know, one, uh, Home Depot or King's... Whatever, and they have grills outside there, and it's an impulse buy. Don't do an impulse buy. Just go see these guys, yeah, Tony, Chris, come, and come, Dan. Come see the experts. Come down here. We're here to educate. You know, we love food. We cook every day. So if there's something you have questions about, you know, you can come out and demo the grills. That's the, the cool thing about our store. You know, we're a one-stop shop. We're your experts when it comes to barbecue. That's all we do. It's barbecue. Thank you, brother. So, and thank there you. is a problem Be because if there was one food. Oh. <laughs> KHOW, an iHeart radio station. With Ross Kaminsky mornings, Dan Kaplis afternoons at 4, KHOW, Denver.
infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Okay, you guys got me? For an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry... Y yeah, 20 seconds, okay? Truck line in town. Did I lose you guys, or did you turn your end off? Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Com. The following is a paid advertisement. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those of KHOW, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. How about a bite to eat? It's time for the second. Okay, did I lose you guys or did y'all turn your end off? Turn eater. What are you hungry for? Okay, I lost you for a little bit. Here for. Delicious and tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Mm. With your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, G. All right, you're hot. Ryan Freeman. Ah, yes, indeedy, Mr. Tweedy. Here we go. The second hour of the Modern Eater Show continues live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman. Uh, this is a good night tonight. Jay Parker, but you know who we're missing tonight is, is Little Rich. It was his birthday yesterday. Little Rich from Rockalitas Tortilla. Happy birthday, and I hope you are enjoying. Greg, where or Jay, yeah, where go. is he? He, well, he's in Mexico, but did you know that yesterday was Dave, Dave Avery's, Avery's birthday, birthday, too? Dave. Oh, my gosh, Dave Happy Avery, birthday, our Dave. sound man. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. 32. What it would be to be 32 again. <laughs> <Dave>. <laughs> That's fantastic. All's well in the world, and the sun sets on the Mile High City, and we can do this because live radio, no man its master as we continue. Let's do this because uh, there's a lot of things that I want to cover right now. And uh, in this segment, we kind of loosen up a little bit in the second hour, Brian. Yes, we do. It's, well, it's the second hour we fade into, or should I say, dial right into our brewers, our distillers. Yeah. It's the time for sharing about great beverages here in Colorado. High distilling coming up in Booze and the News, all the booze news you can use. That'll be at uh, 745. 745, yes, every night at 745. But who's here tonight is Brews Beers. Bruce Beers, did you know there's a beer festival coming up? And I always mark the beginning of a beer festival with Bruce Beers and the Belgium Brew Fest. And with us right now, Kristen, I, listen, all the time I see you at the brewery, we've become friends over the years. It's always so much fun. But that beer festival is off the hook. Yes, yes it is. I cannot wait for it to happen. Um, it's coming up real soon, a couple weeks actually. It's uh, this Sunday, April 28th from 1 to 4 p.m. at our brewery location. We have a beautiful garden and shed area that we have about 13 breweries this year coming out. And uh, gracing us is Oma Gang and Duvel. Um, we're super excited. Oma Gang was here last year and Duvel decided that Sure, we want to join this cool Belgian badass beer fest ourselves it's, as well. And if you, yeah, Duval, come yeah. on now, folks. So, that is like the original quintessential Belgian beer. Come into our little place. You didn't tell the location is 64th and 68th and Pecos? 1675 Close. West 67th Avenue in uh, what they call Midtown. It's a really cool neighbor, neighborhood that's being developed. And uh, one of the cool things is Brews Beers has this cool garden behind there but they have they have this mezzanine that, that patio uh, area oh. and then uh, it's like i don't know recreation center that's attached to it but it's a sprawling space that's yep. very conducive to a nice neighborhood brewery mm -hmm. it's wonderful we love it we get to know um, the neighbors really well so being able to give back and throw a fest where people can just walk there it's so much fun it's like in a very big extended family you can bring your dog and there's a food truck outside that's really interesting yeah. because uh there was a lot of things around dogs but brews beers has always been very dog friendly and you bring your dogger out and you have your dog there with you and you're drinking these delicious beers and you're learning things from charlie gotten kenny which i i just when charlie starts to talk to me i just listen he's like ef hutton when Charlie starts to talk, and this beer festival, the Belgium Brew Fest, here's the, here's the brewery lineup. It's Brews Beers, obviously, because it's right in their backyard. But you've got Briar Common, River North, Periodic, Elevation, Gold Spot, Thirsty Monk, Liberati, Paradox, Intrepid Sojourner, plus, again, what you said, Amagang and Duval. Yep. So cool. Um, what was the first Belgian beer you ever drank? Just going back there. <laughs> I'm trying to think probably one of the big ones. It was Duval for me. Really? That was my first my first entree into 
But, you know, I was a little bit spoiled, I guess, because somebody handed me, like, what, an $8 beer. Um, but it was, uh, I'll tell you, it was everything that it's chalked up to be. I mean, you know, monks, right? You know, we need monks. We need, we need some, some holy man You're blessing so our beer, you know? I love you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, don't goof, bring your proof. That's what I, my old mentor, man. I mean, he told me, don't goof, bring your proof and bring it to 1675 West 67th Avenue. It's in Midtown. It's called Brews Beers. It's Belgian Brewfest and BelgianBrewfest.com. There's a little thing that they do that is so cool. They track the brews, the, the beer that you drink that day. So you bloop your glass. It shows you, and then you can get it on, uh, on an app, right? Yeah, uh, it's Spicket, Spicket Labs. Labs. And talk a little bit about that real quick. So um, we met with Scott Patel. He's a wonderful guy. Startup Spigot Labs. We've got a good friendship, him and Ryan Evans, the other owner of Brews Beers. And we came up, uh, they came up with this concept to track what you're drinking. And we tried it out at our Brewfest a couple years ago. And it's great. And go in, you can, you bloop your glass. Like he said, it tracks what you're drinking. So our Belgian quad, it brings it up and you can go back the next day you after you've you like. cleared up your head. Yeah. I have a theory about why Charlie will always, anyone that ever meets Charlie, you go to this place of, I have sat on your lap once a year since I was a little kid because he looks like Santa Claus and he tells the truth and he brings it, his nice warming voice. I love Charlie Gotten. Charlie he, Gotten Guinea is the man. He is the man. His, he is the man. His storytelling is bar none. Um, but thank you, Kristen. Belgian <laughs> Brewfest, that's on the horizon. And um, it's, I know it sounded awkward where I was going, we'll but I, I, I have a, so much love for it's Charlie. On, it's you on know. a Sunday this year. <laughs> Sunday, 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 which I think will be a great thing. Uh, stick around for this because uh, these are guys right here. And uh, bringing to the show Dave Tabor from Pro Co 360. This guy is really cool. First of all, welcome to the well, Modern Well, thank Eater you. Show. Thanks. It's nice to be on. Hi, another voice on another program, and that's what you want. But your uh, voice is no stranger to the airwaves. And so, Dave, as we introduce you, could you just uh, talk a moment about your podcast? Yeah. I mean, Proco 360, uh, on that podcast, I feature world-class entrepreneurs who choose Colorado. And that's, that's really the focus, and it's been a blast. I want to do an hour with you because entrepreneurship, I think today I wrote something on my Facebook page. Are you a wantrepreneur or an entrepreneur? Well, and there's a, a good... big difference. What do you believe the difference in that is? Oh, man. Well, of course, doing it is the difference, right? I mean, there's so many people who talk about wanting to be entrepreneurs. And, and I'm fortunate on Proco 360 that I get to meet and visit with at depth, uh, in, in depth, people who have really succeeded and really pursued what they want to do and are achieving some great, great things out of Colorado. As, as an entrepreneur, what I believe is that I gave up my um, sweat equity for my potential equity. It's the power of quitting. And it's what no, does that mean? Uh, the power of quitting. And i got to turn you on to some stuff. The yeah. power of quitting <laughs> is when you have this uh, sweat equity that you've done yeah, for yeah, so many yeah. years, what's your potential equity yeah. and how much is your sweat equity taking away from your potential equity and quitting something that's not doing something for you, for your yeah. future. And, 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 and yeah, I gotta, it's, a, I, it's an excellent segue Rich right there, i got to yeah. give Rich Peach into this <laughs> because uh, people – Process and product, right? I mean, that's what it's all about. Yes. Uh, Rich Preach uh, from Growers well, and, Organic. And, and Greg, let me tie into that because he, Rich, is this guy that is all about what. I mean, it's interesting to have these two guys on here because Dave is identifying the entrepreneur, but Rich helps the entrepreneur make it real because he's a guy that has. I, he, by the way, folks, I must admit and disclose, yeah. Rich is my COO. He's your and savior my, and grace. He is my savior in grace. <laughs> I mean, because he helped me realize yeah. what's the difference about, hey, Brian, where is your lane being an entrepreneur? Rich, have you heard about the power of quitting? I have not heard it in that context, but I like it. So I'm going to come and sign up for some Greg time. Well, <laughs> I, I, it's interesting because I really have sat in my bed as an entrepreneur. How do I pay my next bill for my company that's a startup and I've sat there and shaked in the fetal position and I've truly just sat with myself and the entrepreneur is on an island a lot of times. Yep. Can you guys expand upon that, what that island looks like for oh. the entrepreneur? 
Well, you know, I, I have been there, and I, I built a business and sold it. It's been a while since I sold it. But I will tell you that it's uh, that, that fetal position is one I'm familiar with, Greg, and, and uh, I've been there. It's tough. I mean, when things are, when you go home and you explain, my wife's standing over there, Cheryl, you go home and explain, you know, here's why I've mortgaged the house to make payroll, and everybody's getting paid but, uh, but me. And uh, it's not tough to get in the fetal position when those things are happening. It's truly a difficult proposition to sit down and think that it all depends on me. One of the entrepreneurial conundrums is you grow to a certain point yeah, as an entrepreneur, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's your point to where, where do you take your business to the next level? Yeah. Because it's all your own thought process, and giving away control from yeah. an entrepreneur is a very difficult thing. Uh, it. it it's part of the process, and I will say that I noticed that when I hit about 10 employees, all of a sudden things change. When I hit 20, 25 employees, things change a lot. All of a sudden, people, instead of like all being all for one and one for all, becomes like job descriptions. Who's in charge of this? Who's in charge of that? Whose responsibility is for that? All that kind of stuff. You guys are laughing I love you're it. dealing with it, right? Yeah, right but now. it happens. And I made more money, and I had more fun when I had five employees than when I had 25 employees. And still, even at 25, it's really little, right? Well, and Dave, what's so interesting about that comment is, is this is why I was so, I mean, I feel like the stars align to meet someone like Rich because of the fact that he has helped me understand through, I mean, through reading one level yeah, and, yeah. and opening my mind to other people. Because the reality is, is a lot of people have done a lot of research and lined this out. What right, kind right. of advocate have I been yeah. for Rich for you? Oh, oh huge, huge you're advocate. you're talking about being in bed in a fetal position. Rich seems like he's well, actually working. No, and I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to talk <laughs> just quickly. I'd like, and, and, and we're not long for him. I wish we would, and I think we will be, because I'd I think it'd be great to have Rich and Dave back in here with us. Uh, to talk well, it, about it helps this entrepreneur. entrepreneurs. It does. It does. And, and so, Rich, I want to defer to you and talk to you about <laughs> you look at these businesses, you look at what people do, everyday struggles, the top three reasons, the top three things that people should address when they're in small business that they need to tighten up. I'm setting you up, Greg. Well, I'm, I'm going to add a fourth because the first one is the Belgian beer. Peter Sellis, <laughs> yep. Austin, Texas. That was my first yep. Belgian beer. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. For the record. <laughs> All right. Nice. So, um, so top three things: um, communication. Can you measure it? Make it visible. And are you learning and adjusting? That's it. Are you really? Top three things. Yeah. So All three. Cause, cause so communication, learning, and adjusting. No, no. Communication. Okay. Is it visible and measurable? Okay. And are you learning and adjusting along the way? Because the people process product it goes into the learning thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. These he, are guys. He's, he's done m amazing things with Growers Organic. I will tell you. I, I will tell I, you. I will tell you. I will tell you. I mean, yeah. Well, it's it's because like what you said is, are we? Are, am I doing the right thing by going out and packing boxes and doing deliveries myself? I would love to do that, but that is the worst thing I could be doing for the organization. But remember, we're seeing guys like Justin Brunson who texts me tonight, who owns a chain of restaurants, and I said, "What are you doing tonight?" And he said, "I'm doing dishes at Old Major." Yes. Oh, I know. It's trust but me. I, so, it is. But I think that what's important there is he's knee deep, seeing if his systems are working. So one of the best analogies for any business is a restaurant. If the front of the house and the back of the house don't work together, you're screwed. And when you go into the kitchen, it's systems and processes. He's in the middle of his work, seeing what's working and what's not. No matter what system you have, if you don't watch them, they will drift and they will break. People don't like to follow them. Yeah. So. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if is. you want to hear more about this entrepreneurial spirit, because I think you do, you're listening. I know you are. Uh, listen to Dave Tabor, man. Oh, thank you, uh, man. Thank you so much. And uh, donning our doorstep with ProCo360, and you can check that out at ProCo360.com, I would you're assume. Right. You are right. And uh, rich, amazing stuff that you're doing with Brian. If and you fails, can check I him out from afar, but you. not too close. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's called a lobotomy. I just cut a little bit out every day. That's right. <laughs> Kristen Brews Beers, they're killing it. You know you are. We love you. You're such a sweetheart, and you're always here with us at the Modernator Show. This is what community is all about. When yep. you think about entrepreneurial spirit, there's one thing that's an equation that's so often left out. It's relationships. Yep. Relationships will carry you through the hard times. Yep. And I appreciate the relationship that we have with you and Brews Beers. 
It's great, and can't wait to see you guys at the uh, Beer Fest. All right, you, you guys. Come out. So cool. All right, get out of here. We're going to do some fun stuff together, all of us. All right, we're all right. out, huh? Cool stuff. <laughs> all right, coming up next, why not? We're going down the home stretch, Brian Freeman. I think it's time for one of our Look friends. Look at that. We got Rich. He got, he's got his shirt off, the whole thing, man. He's enjoying it. I, I, and who wouldn't, if you come down here ever to the Modern Eater and the Studio Kitchen on a Saturday night, you get to experience community, friendship, collaboration amongst brewers, distillers, farmers, ranchers. We are bringing it all right here. If it's about food and beverage, it is right here on the Modern Eater Show every Saturday night. We're the sugar cube. We are the sugar cube. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, coming back next. This is a cool one. 7.15, a little bit behind, but we'll catch up. And Zach Ritzmiller from 1623 Brewery. Do you know what 16? You would think it was like a past a 14-er. I know it's the only Pilsner in America that was a gold, a gold medal winner. Where are they located? I don't know. Why are they why are they tied to Colorado? I don't know, but we'll catch up next with Zach Ritzmiller. He's an interesting guy. It'll be a lot of fun right here on the Modern Eater show on iHeartRadio. Choose your bear through Cyberland. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search the Modern Eater or check out the website themoderneater.com. With PatriotSoftware.com, accounting and payroll, keep your time and money. Mike Campbell here, serial entrepreneur. Here's what our payroll customer, Laura, thinks about us. Patriot Software and their amazing team are a crucial part of our business. They handle the details of payroll and tax payments, so we can focus on delivering exceptional customer service to our own clients. Patriot's payroll is affordable, easy to use, and it keeps us organized. They're receptive to their customers and strive to demonstrate that each day. Without a doubt, we will be using their payroll services for many years to come. Thank you, Patriot Software. Five stars. Go to PatriotSoftware.com to get your payroll pricing for up to 100 employees. Use promo code RADIO and get two months of payroll processing free. That's PatriotSoftware.com. PatriotSoftware.com. Accounting and payroll. Keep your time and money. If you've got a business and need a website or need a graphic designer, F. Johnson Design does it all. Take the headache out of trying to build your own website or design graphics. Who has time for that? F. Johnson Design will get you up and running with a professional and great-looking website. Design sharp graphics to your specifications and have your site up faster than you think. Logo, package design, SEO coding, and more. F. Johnson Design did the Modern Eater's website. Go to themoderneater.com to check out some of their work. Reach out to F. Johnson Design. Design at fjohnsondesign.com. Hey, it's Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. If you cook, then you'll know the importance of a quality knife and proper care. My training in Japan exposed me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives I fell in love with. Element Knife Company is chef-driven, and my goal is to support and educate. Get at me for a knife clinic or conversation. Find me at elementknife.com or by simply calling 303 460 4628. For the best knives in your kitchen, think Element Knife Company. Hey, it's Greg Holland back. One minute. Oh, beer festival season coming right up, and if you like great Belgian-style beers, there's an event that you don't want to miss. It's the third annual Belgium Brew Fest, and it's happening Sunday, April 28th, next to Brews Beers in Midtown. The fest will include 12 breweries, including Brews, Briar Common, River North Periodic Elevation, Gold Spot, The Thirsty Monk, Liberati, Paradox, and Intrepid Sojourner, plus special guests from Amagang. How do you guys want me to do these breaks? Their best Belgian-style beers. The party. Yeah, pretty far behind. The food trucks and special beers and pricing at Brews right after. Okay. Okay. Cool. 4 p.m. in the garden next to Brews Beers. It's at 1675 West 67th Avenue in Denver. No. So get yours now at BelgianBrewFest.com. Join the party for some Belgian-style badassery at the Belgian Brewfest. On Got one more. We'll see you there. Okay. Peter Show at Troy Guard Tag Restaurant Group. I'll see you guys soon. My name is Jennifer Jasinski, and I'm listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Okay, you're hot. Okay, back to Studio Kitchen, Colorado. The Modern Eater Show continues. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman. 
Uh, Dave Avery, Little Rich Schneider, he's in Mexico. Little Rich, I love you. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday, Little Rich. He's uh, just getting a little bit of downtime, and uh, that guy deserves it more than anybody else. Uh, Zach Rissmiller, how are you? Welcome to the show. Man, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, so where were we this week? Uh, we were at a little convention. little convention, yeah. Craft Brewers Conference this week uh, down at the convention center. Um, man, that was a good time. When I got to say this, this segment is a little bit of a twist because we are hyper local and this is a very interesting hyper local twist that we are about to spin with our friends here on the modern eater. Well, check it out here. Here's what it is. And you would think this is elevation, but it's not 1623 brewing. Right. Yeah. What in the world? This is like your measurement from Colorado to Maryland. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's not it's not an elevation. It's not a year. It's yeah, it's a mileage. It's my commute to work. <laughs> and uh, um, 1,623 miles. miles away, or a four so, and a half hour flight. So yeah. <laughs> you you hail from a many many things in the brewing industry. Right. Uh, dry dock. Yep. Right. Uh, Resolute. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, what, what, illustrious career just go through it take 30 Thanks. seconds yeah yeah so i started off the brew hut at, at, at dry dock and uh did you know basically shadowing at, at uh at dry dock uh got my first uh assistant brewership at uh, elk mountain and then um ended up uh opening resolute which was super successful and then um took a buyout from that and then i went to bull and bush for a hot minute and I mean a hot minute. And then it was director of brewing a, operations. A cup of coffee. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, and director of brewing operations for Rock Yard um, through their rebrand and their redo. And Have you ever heard of Lockheed Martin? You know, never. Is that a little place? Have anything to do with, uh, like, down south near Roxborough? No, nothing. Not, nothing I down there. I feel like you guys may have done a little research on that. So you were an engineer of some sort. I, I was, yeah. Point. yeah. I, was. I see that. I mean, a lot of times it's like, you're a brewer? Okay. You mean yeah, you were an engineer. Like, yeah, well, you mean somewhere. a rocket, rocket scientist? Um, slash, yeah, I'm a beer brewer. How do you translate that? Is it, is it the methodical process of procedures that you bring forward? You know, I think it's a, I think it's a little bit of everything. Yes, procedures for sure, like um, standard rate or operating procedures. I think we've got um, quite a few things that actually translate into brewing. I mean, all, all our control systems, the glycol, the... That, that everything that goes into brewing is very methodical, and you have to be uh, very type A, but you also have to be a very type B as well. You have to be very artistic. You have to be willing to paint that picture uh, with your beer, and um, yeah, that's that's me. I'm a little bit of A and a little bit of B. So, Zach, let's do this. I want to take two minutes to okay. talk about what you're up to right now, and then we're going to keep you for the remainder of the show. Well, wait. He's got to start be very pouring this because, listen, okay. I'm a to No, a we're going to let him. I want to gonna... try Zach's okay. award-winning yeah, let's, beer. Let's yeah, take, yeah. first right, of all, can, talk can, about the brewing company in Maryland. So, um, 1623. Uh, um, and pour why you do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. We're yeah, going to yeah, challenge yeah. you here at the okay. Modern Eater. All right, all you right. know. Let's see. What am I? Pour and, and talk. Yeah, right. Say, here's there what I'm you pouring. go. Thank you, sir. And here's what waiting. I'm going to talk about. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, the idea behind 1623, me and my cousin got together. And uh, at first, I, I turned him down. I thought he was crazy. We want to open a brewery in Maryland. Mike. The, the, yeah, Mike. Yeah, the, uh, the um, crazy uh, the, guy. The, the, Mike. The, the, um, the laws in Maryland are super strict and they're, Check not this out. they're not real good. These guys got a different zone use permit in an industrial area where they are in Maryland, which was an exception. Right. That blows my mind, but it shows what kind of weight you're pulling. Well, y I don't know if it necessarily shows the weight I'm pulling. It just, I think it shows what they, the, they the wanted a brewery is, there. The community is willing to do for, That's uh, delicious. for, for to, to, to really just to bring the, the revenue in. And, 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 and the community has been wanting it for a very, very long time. And Zach, say again, why, why'd you choose Maryland 
and Colorado with Colorado Connection. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been a brewer in Colorado for almost 10 years. Exactly. And, and um, uh, what Maryland provided was just a way to get away from all of the saturation that is Colorado. Okay. I've, I've been okay. successful in Colorado. I have. But I, I, I don't necessarily know that I need to stay here. I, I, I Big wanna, fish. I wanna, Small pond. Yep. No, I, yeah. I I need to. That's right, though. I need, to, Zach. I need to make I need to make my own way. Yep. And and Maryland is my own way. Uh, in Colorado, people know me, but if if I go to Maryland, your beer is here to stand alone. Zero people know me. Yeah. So it's it's I, part I of why I moved over, from Colorado. You know, or moved from Arizona. I, I was a kid. I grew up in a place where everyone knew me. And I wanted something different where I could go someplace. Go and even party. though you like Cheers, uh, you like the bar that everyone knows you, but you want to make your own name in a new place. So here's a to. Littleton, Colorado boy. Yep. Who from Elizabeth, Colorado to Maryland. Where in Maryland? Uh, Eldersburg. Eldersburg is 1,623 miles exactly. Wow. And he's bringing that beer, that process, that Zach, Zachness, <laughs> right? Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. But I, I, I got I got to change gears for, for for just a second if I can host your show for you. Please do. Um, how how is the how's the pilsner? I was just going to compliment you because Delicious. you know what? This is truly one he's of the not best a pilsners. Beer drinker. I'm not. I, well, and it's it, it's it's not because I don't love the flavor. I love the flavor. My body just doesn't like it. I'm, I'm getting old. Something, something about my girl Carly, gut, fairy gut mother, helped me do a reset. And right now, just my body's saying, hey, I'm not big on beer. So I'm big on one, dis, one distilled spirit. But I taste everything. Tequila. And cheers to this hey, cheers. Pilsner. Yeah, I see yeah. why you won a gold medal. Cheers. Uh, we're going to well, cover more ground. Not just, not just me and my team. Uh, well, it was me and my team that did it. But, yeah, absolutely. Little yeah. different format than beer craft, which you were on this last week. I and I would I encourage you to take a look at that because uh, Zach is a very interesting guy. We'll take a quick turnaround. We'll come back. But I want, uh, I want to do this. Jay, we have an announcement. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, an announcement. I, would, I just wanted to let people know about the ACF Pikes, Pikes Peak Chef and Culinary Passport fundraiser that's happening uh, April 27th. It's uh, at St. Paul's Church. That's in Colorado Springs, St. Paul's Church in Colorado Springs, 630 to 930. It's 50 bucks. You get food from around the world, 12 different countries. There's millions and millions of chefs that are doing it. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to the ACF Pikes Peak chapter. Go check them out again. It's April 27th. Go to pikespeakchefs.com to get your tickets. Pikes Jay, who does it benefit? Chefs.com. Who does it benefit? It, it benefits empower the people through the power of food. Nice. It, it, it nice. benefits uh, their. Um, let, me, let me pull in here. We haven't chosen the silver king. And if you're in Colorado Springs, get out and and rock this. It's their endowments funds. Okay. That's what it benefits. Okay, endowments beautiful. Funds. Man, I need someone to read. take a break. Holy we got to take a break. He can read. We got to take a break. We'll be right back. Zach's going to continue with us, and we're going to have the Whiskey Sisters up here next. Uh, the, uh, the hold down, batten down the hatches is what I have to say. We're going to pour some beers. Here they come. Felicia and Stephanie Amok, they're next. It's the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips. Served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey everyone, it's Colleen Ferreira with the Colorado Chefs Association. Are you ready to put your passion to work? Well, we train the future chefs of Colorado, and we want you to join us. The Colorado Chefs Association is recruiting for our fall semester right now. Join our American Culinary Federation accredited cooking program. Work in a professional kitchen and get paid all while earning your sous chef certification. Email me at colleen at acfcoloradochefs.org. I'd love to hear from you. Join our excitement and explore a new future. 
Do you have the goods? If you're looking for a neighborhood restaurant that features gluten-free menu items, stop by The Goods. Whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, or even a meat lover, they've got something for everyone. Do you love a great sandwich? How about wood oven roasted vegetables on multi-grain bread with rosemary, mayo, and olives, vegan and certified gluten-free? Or for the meat lover, try one of their most popular menu items, the Paleo Bowl. With house-smoked pork, wood oven roasted veggies, two sunny side up eggs, and Indonesian sambal sauce, it's delicious. As a friendly neighborhood restaurant featuring dinner, brunch, and full bar with two happy hours daily, they truly care about you, the customer, and desire to provide an extraordinary dining experience for everyone, their family and children friendly, and even have a playroom for the little ones. The Goods, a friendly neighborhood. Coming back in 10 seconds. Menu of gluten-free and vegan options. And they don't forget about meat lovers. With a staff that really cares. On East Colfax, directly can. Coming on right here, guys. Hungry? TheGoodsRestaurant.com. Coming back right here. Hey, this is Chef Carrie Bear from Bardo here in Denver. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> and you are listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. You're hot. Yeah, we are hot. We're on fire in this kitchen tonight. You remember What's going on here? Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me that way. <laughs> what the heck was going on? God, oh, Stephanie no. and Felicia Hammock. Oh, right God, here. They're, they're here. The, with, with, <laughs> wow, she just melted down. Nope, that's the way we start a segment, a big segment right here. Oh Get full God. value. Yeah. Zach Riskiller is here. This continuing is with the. Here, just put it in your pocket, along. honey. Okay. Zach, have you ever met the Whiskey <laughs> Sisters? I haven't, oh I haven't yet, but. Here you I'm, go. What are you I'm, pouring I'm, these gals? I, I've, oh, I've here got, we go. Uh, oh, we got, got beer. Stout. Stout. They don't like beer. Got stout. Well, I, no, you know we appreciate. We will appreciate beer. I think that I like how you said that very political. <laughs> I like that very well. We, never, we the speak from the heart. Very good job, ladies. You like very chocolate, good job, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. If you like chocolate, like a stout. then you like this. Yeah. Whiskey Sister Supply Company. Yes. What do you guys do? We sell grain to distilleries. From the family farm See, and from other farmers in Local Eastern grain. Yeah. I would totally disagree with you. I think you sell the why. You sell the why do we oh, do yeah. business mm. in Colorado? You sell the why do I support a family? Why do you? Why should somebody support you? Well, why does anybody support their their local farmer, their local restaurant, their local hairdresser? I mean, well, I guess all hairdressers are local. I guess that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Say your name first <laughs> when you talk so people know who you are. I'm Stephanie. I'm Felicia. But no, local really matters. It's, it supports the community, right? A community can only be supported when you have somebody making a livelihood and other people supporting the livelihood. They, if they have a small business, that livelihood wouldn't succeed if somebody wasn't supporting them locally. So it is community-driven. Oh, my goodness. Where's the... Yeah, I, I think thing? it's there, yeah. It says right here, community-driven. And that's where we are, right? Because we support yeah. our distillery communities. We're at their events. They get to know our community at the farm. They know it's a family, and we're all here to support each other. We're all trying to do something special and different. And Well, and you have an awesome product because you're working not only your own farm, yeah, what but I think your, you work with some your partners right around you. Overall. So, so yeah, not only is, are we supporting the family farm, but we're supporting, like, farmers out of Yuma, out of Cope, Colorado, um, even just down the road from us. Stuff that we may not be growing ourselves at this point in time, um, we will go and find it. So if you have something random that you want to grow or want to find and source, we'll find it within Colorado. What would be something random? Because sorghum. Of- We've been hearing sorghum, buckwheat, millet. And you can't grow barley, of all things, in eastern Colorado. You can grow, grow it on the western, or the western slope, the, the front, front range. range. So, so, yeah, we found, you know, there's a farmer up here that we work with on the front range as well for um, barley. You know what's funny? Someone just came to me for einkorn. Really? Yeah, einkorn grain. And so I just, hmm. a, and I play in your world. Hey, I, I'm, I'm on, more about on. fresh. That's inside baseball. Whoa, please. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> what was that? What is that? I, einkorn. Yeah, Go ahead, lady. Oh, you don't know I it? I don't know. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, einkorn is, is for everybody. It's like an heirloom grain. I mean, okay. it's in the, your wheat family. But it's the wheat family because it yep. sounds. Yep. It, it is. Yeah, it's not a corn. It's a wheat, but it is something that a little, you know, so what's really interesting is a lot of hobby farmers is sure. what I call them because, you know, and really I, I don't mean to be rude, but the reality is is not a lot of agriculture is year-round here in Colorado. Nope. And there's a lot of Colorado farmers that want, that work, you know, 
You work year round, don't get me wrong, and there's no disrespect meant by what I'm about to say, but the reality is, is there are people that, like, if you're in Mexico or California, you are 100% year round. There is never a break. And we're very fortunate in, in that respect for our, our local farmers because in the, in the vegetable world, it's 100 and, you know, our season is about 140 days. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge season that we have here in Colorado. So you plan quite a bit, you work the land. Yep. A, a little bit, but you're working with regenerative farmers that are doing no-till. Yep. So that's something that's a big deal that I commend you for because that, you know, we not many people. Yep, right here. Zach's raising his hand Zach, saying, what do you got? What no -till. Me too. What is no-till? Oh, oh no-till. You, yeah. you touch the ground as least as possible because you're trying to keep everything, all the goodness that's in there. The more oh. you till it, the more the goodness goes away. So, yep. Tilling means no till. Like, okay. like no a rototiller. Till. Yeah, like if you ever got into your back garden and you were like rototilling to try to start a garden in your backyard, that really messes with the, with the ground. I yep. mean, it's necessary at that point in time when you're doing your garden. But um, from a no-till perspective, because they're in there, you're going to be touching it you know, when you're growing grains and stuff. So they, there is a, a piece of equipment called a strip till, which we were like, we can't post that on Instagram because we're no till. And they're like, no, 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 no. It actually touches it the least amount to get it enough ready for when we put the wheat in or the corn in or whatever. Um, but it's touching it the least amount possible. Well, and, and a big reason for this is most people don't realize that in places like Kansas, you can have up to four inches of topsoil drift mm -hmm. and which basically... We are losing because of the way we have taken, a, a, you know, our agriculture world, we wanted better, faster, high-tech ag. And unfortunately, we didn't think about the long term on the environment of that, which is a lot why I got into organic farming. Can you dumb it down for me a little bit, though? Here's what it, I oh, want to yeah, know. Yeah, me too. Well, and, we've and, been growing and, the and, same and here's thing. here's what I want to ask. So, uh, Whiskey Sisters Supply Company, it's a real thing. And they're right here in Colorado in our backyard. And this is a farm that was like, what's our future? What's right. our future? What are we going to do? Yes. Uh, wh what did you see with where your farm was? Talk about that real quick. And then what you're doing to go into the next millennial of what, whatever the Whiskey Sister supply is. So I guess there's a couple different things we're moving from, right? The economics of the farm and how we're actually creating a sustainable farm financially. And then there's the other part, which is how are we taking the farm and moving it from old ways of farming, so tilling, keeping the weeds down, using a lot of pesticides to really take it to another place where you have cover crops that keep the wind from blowing the ground around and when you're tilling it as less as possible and really maintaining the, the nutrients and the, the biodynamics within the, within the ground that create a better yield actually at the end of the day. And that's like tied into crop rotation. Mm -hmm. And to, t to bring this to Zach and, and what this conversation where we had, had pinnacled is is what, why is it important to look at crop rotation, to not grow the same thing in the same place over and over again? We need a chalkboard for that. Because <laughs> this, this is how dust bowls happen. Right. Yes. If you plant the same crop and you plant over and over yep. and over and over again, that's, that's, that, that's what you end up with, with, with cover crops like rye and, and, and other things that, that will uh, even germinate at even 38 degrees. Like that, that really helps the ground actually be really sustainable and that's what we look for in our barley farms that we that we source from we want to make sure that they're actually sustainable they're actually taking care of the ground they're actually taking care of the sky like just making sure that everything is just in in its place the way it should be um it w with cover crops and other things and that and zach R Riss Miller, thank you so much because that's very important conversation but when you look at whiskey sister supply company i want to talk about well, what do you do? What do you do when somebody is considering you for your source for grains? That's a very I, I would think, though, it's easy. I think all they got to do is. A, there's a lot of competition, but we time and time again see the success stories that come out through the Whiskey Sisters Supply Company. And we have one next with uh, Ty Distillery. Ty Brothers. Ty Brothers. Ty Brothers. Which Brothers are also Distillery. real brothers. Yes. Yeah, I mean. We, we deal <laughs> with being siblings. They do the and same they thing. they have very well, close and how personal many, <laughs> relations. How many distillers do you think you're working with in Colorado right now? Well, we think or we actually, 32. you know. No. You know, we yes, have, you should know. We 17 distilleries that we work with. Uh, okay. Let's but wait it. a second. One just opened and you might get a new customer. 
<laughs> hey, you know what? Awesome. Currently, that's why it's a girly. Yep. <laughs> they have a great name, and Booze and News is next. Booze and News, all the Booze News you can use is up next, and they'll stick around. Whiskey Sisters from Whiskey Sisters Supply Company. That's right here from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. It is the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Through Cyberland. But don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. Home prices have gone up by 50% in the last six years. However, it seems values are peaking. You've probably also heard the Federal Reserve has raised the Fed funds rate four times in 2018 alone, but mortgage rates have actually dropped by half a point since late last fall. Maybe it's time to put that equity to work, like paying off very high credit cards, student loans, or remodel your house. Hi, I'm Wesley Hoagland with Westland Financial. Let us put you in a position to do any of these things with no closing costs. That's right. Nothing's rolled into your loan, whether it's conventional, FHA, or VA. We'll pay your title, settlement, lender, and recording fees. Or maybe you just want to refinance out of your mortgage insurance. All it takes is a five-minute phone call to see how we can save you thousands of dollars a year. So call Westland at 888-455-3669. It's the biggest no-brainer in the history of mankind. Call us at 888-455-3669. That's 888-455-3669. 888-455-3669. NMLS number 3304. Not all loans apply. Equal housing lender. Get ready to change the way you look at food. This is Peter Allman, the founder of South River Aquaponics and Alpenglow Mushrooms. As a Le Cordon Bleu trained chef, I know the importance of quality ingredients. That's why in 2013, I left the fine dining industry to start a sustainable organic farm. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow, we are the leader in sustainable growing practices, utilizing our natural resources as effectively as possible. No pesticides, no GMOs, no funny business, just clean, honest food production. We use old world techniques combined with modern technology to bring you the- One minute produce. Our gourmet mushroom facility One minute. O2 for our greenhouse that grows tilapia as well as lettuces and herbs in our aquaponics system. Look for us in natural grocers, city market and served on the plates of Colorado's finest chefs. At South River Aquaponics Alpen I just threw it in here if that's okay. It's just a one minute spot. And see our product? Yeah, I mean, it's a, a, a indeed spot, so. My dad's vegetables are so good, I can't live without them. At Indeed, we believe a resume is a great way to see an overview of a candidate, but you're not hiring a resume, you're hiring a person. That's why we offer tools to give you a deeper sense of the people behind the paper, like skill tests, which let you actually see a candidate's abilities in action to make sure they're a good fit for the job. See beyond the resume with Indeed. Increase your visibility to great candidates with a free sponsored job upgrade on your first job posting at Indeed.com slash promo. The sponsored job upgrade is a $50 sponsored job credit. Users are charged once the credit is spent or it expires. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Today, business happens here, here, and virtually anywhere. Because today, innovative companies are reinventing the way business happens. And they need people who can keep up. This is an Indeed spot. I just kicked it out from the last break and put it right here. That way, we don't play anything at the end of the show. So, who can help you deliver the future of commerce? The United States Postal Service. See why we deliver more e-commerce packages to homes than anyone at usps.com future. Hey, Colorado chefs, Brian Freeman with Growers Organic and the Modern Eater Talk Show. Do you care about where your food comes from? I do. Do you want loyalty from customers who care about that as well? I can help by providing top quality organic produce with reliable delivery, knowledgeable sales team who genuinely care about how food is grown, transported, and served. Growers Organic will ensure you have excellent... 10 seconds. James Beard Dinner, your nightly specials, or your regular menu item. All right, Greg, the, mu the music's going to play at 5920, okay? Growers Organic. 5920 is when the music will start playing. Now it's so we'll go out at 59, 50, 5920 is when the music will start playing. Thank you, sir. My meat grilled and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair and a, and a cooler beer. Here's your booze news. Yes, indeedy. Here it is. Booze news. All the booze news you can use right here on iHeartRadio. Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman. What a show tonight. Great yes. show. Oh, it is, it, it's such a different vibe in here, and I feel bad because Little Rich isn't here to experience with us. Have a great time in Mexico, and happy birthday, my friend Little Rich, from all of us here at the... Uh, yeah, happy thank birthday. you, thank happy you. Happy birthday, Rich. All right, we've got the Amox here with us, and Felicia and uh, Stephanie, our favorites. They are always here with... I mean, how many, how many years have we... 
I think we've done five or six of these so far. Yeah, uh, we've been in business for three and a half, so. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what like do you that. know about the ties, Dan and Paul? Well, they're fantastic. Well, first of all, Would you do an introduction? <laughs> do a proper introduction. Introduction? Okay. Yeah. All yep. right, well. This is from siblings to siblings, and it's a sibling week, right? That was like sibling Tuesday week. or something. You keep something. saying week. Yeah. You say it's a day. Well, we're going to go with week, we're okay? It's like it birth out. You know, we have a yeah. birthday, and I have, have a birthday month. You have a birthday week. Oh, birthday she's month, going for a right? month, okay. Yeah. So it is sibling week right here. <laughs> All right, sibling week. We've got two week. sisters and two brothers yep. who have a fantastic distillery up in what neighborhood would you call that? Swansea. Swansea, yeah, so yeah. right off 42nd of... 42nd in Milwaukee. 42nd Milwaukee. Ah, so you just take uh, 42nd. You go up north a little bit in Milwaukee Street. It's easy. There they are. Elvira Swanson neighborhood. Yes. There it yes. is. Yeah, yep. it's right yep. under the A line, guys. Nice. Oh, on the A line. So you guys are strategically placed near something that, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, I need a break. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get off the train for 30 minutes and I might have a cocktail. I might have an of old fashioned of course. or a gin and tonic. Or, or you might just drive there for a cool distillery tour. <laughs> I like it. Yes. I like it. So you're giving tours. Yes. We are doing tours. Yeah. They're doing everything. Yeah. And nice. so we're going to talk about that model, but it begins and ends with your sourcing. So Whiskey Sisters Supply Company comes in with Thai Distillery. Yeah, they called. Um, you give me a jingle and said, hey, we're looking for some grain. I heard about you. Yeah, we kind of, yeah, we kind of found out from a friend who also did radio, uh, and he said, uh, these, these girls are great. Uh, Colorado sourced. Give them a call. Called them up. Two years later. Who did radio? I want to know. Reno. Reno. Reno Natal, Sports Talk. Oh, okay. Moved, I guess he moved to uh, Maine or something last two weeks ago or something. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. thank you, Reno, because yeah. making connections is what it's all yep. about. Yep. Hyper-local, keeping it yeah. real. Yeah, keeping it real. So here you guys go, and you're like, okay, well, you know, how do you source, first of all? Thai guys. How do we source? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're Colorado natives. We want to keep it as local as possible. So pretty much all of our grain, there's one grain that we can't source locally that we do buy from out of state, but everything else comes from the Whiskey Sisters. All of the products we use are locally, locally sourced. All of our bar products, most everything is, is locally sourced that we use in our bar, um, tasting room, I should say. So everything we can, we want to use local. It's, it's, it's part of our keep, keep, it, keep it here, keep it in the family. What are you guys nice. distilling? I, I think a lot of people that tune in to the Modern Eater Show want to know, well, what what's your spirits? You know, are you Sorry. doing uh, vodka? Are you doing yes. rum, gin, uh, whiskey? So we started out, great things. We started out with uh, a bourbon. So about what, four and a half years ago, five years ago, we started yeah. We yeah. started with a small test still that we, uh, we, uh, we Paul picked up somewhere, I don't you know, somewhere in... Uh, somewhere from Tennessee. Tennessee. I love hearing so. that. <laughs> Kentucky... <laughs> So we started with, out with that. We um, played around with that for a while, and then we we moved on to a vodka and a gin, and then we then we moved on to our single malt. Um, it's a single malt wheat whiskey, and then we've also got a rye whiskey as well. So I've never heard somebody start out with the bourbon. That's like something. It's in gestation. It's aging. <laughs> it'll be there. We've well, got the vodka. We've got the gin. All, right, all, right. all that. Is it? Ba am I backwards in my mind and my thinking of what you're well, doing there? It was kind of an experimental bourbon that we started. How out long with. are you aging? Because I've seen everything. So we age our. We have 15 gallon barrels. We age an all new American oak, white oak. Um, we're aging those in a 15 for about 14 months. So and uh, we've got 30, new 30 gallon barrels too that we're moving to, and that's going to be anywhere from 19 to 24 months. How many barrels are you sitting on? What do you think? Uh, we got about 50 barrels right now. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And that's for you. stuff, man, because yeah. liquid gold. I mean, you're, that the bourbon, the whiskey, that's liquid gold. It the is bourbon. interesting. The aging doesn't hurt it. Let it rest. Let you it know? rest. I mean, Let it rest. Yeah. yeah. So take two minutes and talk about what you think it is important in this uh, distilling community. Uh, I think the, the distilling community in Colorado, it, it's a great place to do it because you can self-distribute. So uh, one of the few states you can do that. Um, so you see a lot of distillers coming online. I think we're second in the United States in distillers right now. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting close to first because they seem to be popping up everywhere. Um, you know, w we really focus on patience and trying to put out the best product right away. Uh, we make our, our heads cuts. I don't know if you guys know what heads cuts, tails oh, absolutely, cuts. Absolutely, man. Yep. Um, we, we try to make those really tight, which gives us uh, 
I think, a better product right away. Um, since we're aging in 15-gallon barrels, we have more surface area to, to per, per, out, per uh, liquid. So, so we're getting good flavors within that year, year and a half. Um, and what you guys have been tasting tonight. So you guys have more money than you know what to deal with. More money with than God. Because dude. you're sitting <laughs> on. I mean, uh, that's a tough business. The distilling yeah. community is yeah. a tough business. Well, there's a big upfront commitment to be a good distiller. Yeah, absolutely. There really is. What do you uh, talk about that? To be a good, good distiller? No, just that money. upfront well, commitment to keep yeah, that brand alive. the business side it's of what a, you're doing. It's, it's, not a, it's not a get rich overnight scheme at all. You know, you've got to definitely have patience, Paul. Paul and I looked at our budget initially, and uh, it quadrupled. So, um, but that was okay. We we knew that it was gonna probably take a lot more, and and it's you know we're still we're not we're not there yet at all, but we're definitely getting there. It's so, gonna, it's if a restaurant out. wants to pick up your spirits and taste them, how do you go about that process? Uh, we have a full-time employee, Devin Sandlin. He's rock and rolling back at the uh, tasting room right, right now. now. So he is our, he's our full-time sales guy, and he'll go out and market our products to these restaurants, bars, um, liquor stores, and, you know, we'll do tastings. We'll come in and do tastings for whomever wants, you know, a, a, a restaurant or a bar. You've got a great product. Your gin, you, you made me a nice little gin on the rocks. Nice. Like it was that. very nice. Yeah. So very thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we want to do long-form stuff. So these guys, are, are in particular, we want to bring back and do a long-form interview with them. But right now, it's something that when you look at uh, your distillery in particular, 20. What's, what's the address? 4200 Milwaukee Street. 4200 Milwaukee, Milwaukee, folks. The Elvira Swanson neighborhood. Yeah. I want to thank you all. I want to thank the Whiskey Sisters, yeah. all of our spicy Dan with savory spice, Proud Souls, 1623, Ty Brothers Distilling right here. We're going to wrap up that, and week, don't Brian. let me forget it. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.